All right, and we're back, and it's uh, Comp 2068. It's Week 5, Lesson 5, Part 2. So you want to build a slot machine, eh? Right? How do we do that? Well, we've got to get the graphics first, right? So that's the first piece uh, of, this, of this puzzle, right? Now, here's some questions. Should I pick, if I was going to build the graphics, and I'm going to ask you guys, since we're in the class together, to use this as an opportunity as a lab or, you know, a, the lab piece to our class, to start pulling together your graphics for your project today. Right? That's what I'd ask you to do. Now, if you, don't, if you decide not to do that, that's up to you. But this is what I recommend. Right? So first, we'll start off with which graphic do you guys like? If, you're, if I was going to pull a graphic, do you think this is a good graphic? <laughs> Why would you say this is not a good graphic? Right? Well, there's a couple of things. If I look at the graphic, one, I've got too many uh, reels, right? Because I'm planning to do a three-reel one, right? Unless you're planning to do a, well, actually, this has only three reels, but it has, it has a couple of other graphics over here. Um, it's a little busy. That's one thing uh, that I could pull in. It's not bad. This piece here, I'm going to have to change because this piece here is gonna, might be different. Let's take a look at this graphic in detail just to see if I'm going to select it. And, of course, it's this one, right? If I'm going to zoom in here, if you notice, if this is the graphic I was going to use, it tells me my winning and losing. If I want to use this graphic without doing heavy modification to this piece right here, I'm going to have to take it off. I'm going to have to actually remove this piece, right? I'm also going to have to remove this piece and this piece, right? And this piece. These are all the pieces I'm going to have to remove. The rest can stay. Also, this is okay. This handle's okay. I'm probably not going to use it, right, the handle. But I need to put a button somewhere. Now, I could put it this way, but the problem with this area here, it looks like the area is kind of like the top part of the slot machine. So I can't really put buttons up here, which limits my what I can do. I could probably make this into a button, this area here, by cutting it out. If I wanted to cut this out, and then make this the button piece. So if I hover over it, I can create a, a button-like effect. I could do that. So this could be my spin button, which looks like what it is here, right? But my bet buttons, have, I have an issue with that. Where would I put my bet buttons if I use this graphic? Probably down here somewhere, which means I'd have to cut all this piece out. Okay. The good thing about this is, here's the good parts about this one. It's on a white background, which means that I can easily cut out the background to make it transparent, right? Because my, my canvas, I'm planning in my mind to make my canvas white. So this isn't bad, necessarily, this jumble slot. Um, the actual uh, slot, the, the, uh, the, the, the reels themselves are quite small. So that's the one thing I have to take into account. And also, if you notice, the way this is this, this drawn out, I'm just going to zoom in here so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. Do I have a problem with these reels here? Take a look. Look up here. Yeah, I got this ugly reflection here. So I'm going to have to clean up these reels even more. There's a lot of work to do here, right? Just from a graphic perspective. Now, if I'm really if I'm really interested in doing using this graphic, I could I could do it and maybe just you know instead of cut using this reflection, so it looks like this the 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 reels here are um, embedded or receded. They're recessed. See, take a look. These reels are recessed right in. They're kind of inside of the slot machine. I could make it so that my slot machine appears that the reels are outside the slot machine. I pull them up a little bit. I could do that and avoid all this reflection. That would be my fix to this thing. I wouldn't try and do graphic manipulation, try and take all this stuff out. It's just too much work. Okay? That's one thing I could do. What about building my slot machine three dimensionally? You know, if I really want, would, I, would, it, would that be advisable? Like, for example, Maybe I could find, here, a slot machine mesh. Slot machine mesh for, um, for a 3D kind of, uh, uh, you know, if I have something like that. And there are some out there. Some people have probably built, here's, a, here's a, uh, a 3D mesh for a slot machine. And I can probably import this into something like Blender and then color it the way I want. This is a lot of detail, by the way. Uh, and then make angle it towards the front, add shadows the way I want to make, add them, add the reflectivity, all that kind of stuff to make my slot machine look three-dimensionally, and then take a snapshot of that, just like I did for my other uh, game, and then use that flat image for my 2D slot machine. I could. A lot of work. Right? We don't have time for that. And I don't recommend it unless you're very, very, very well versed in something like Blender uh, or some other 3D um, manipulation software like Maya. Or something like that. If you're not like that, if that's not if you're not inclined to do that kind of stuff, then I highly don't recommend you put you put your efforts into kind of putting together a 3D mesh. 
That's just one thing I don't recommend. Let's go back one. And I'm going to go back down to regular kind of view for this thing just for a second. So we're looking at a good graphic. So this one, meh, not so good. How about this one? OK, let's take a look at this one. So I'm trying to find a graphic. Again, some of the similar problems. I've got the button on top here. I've got to replace this piece and all of this piece, right, or some parts of this piece. This is not as bad because there's not as much to replace. Um, I don't have a lot of spaces for my output. I might have to put my output over here, my labels, as an example. But I do have this problem here with reflectivity again. If you notice, the slots are reflected across this piece here, the top part of this piece, which means I'd have to do some graphic manipulation to get rid of that as well. So keep looking. Uh, I won't use that one. It's too simple. This one's OK. Um, there's some good things about this and bad things about this. Let's take a look at this one. Actually, go back one. Let's, uh, let's look at the actual link itself. So let's say just view the image. Sometimes that works. There we go. That's not what I wanted. I wanted this one. And I want to view the image only. Sometimes it works. Here we go. And if I zoom in here for this image and I kind of zoom it up a little bit so we can see this thing. So here's like a Las Vegas slot machine. Uh, there's a couple of lights up here. Again, we've got a white background, which is a good thing. I've got this other stuff up here, which makes no sense to me which I might want to remove. So that's kind of a piece, a pain in the ass for me to remove. I have to take that out. Um, I don't have any reflectivity, which is good. So this, where my, my, uh, uh, my reels are, is pretty good. On the downside, not a lot of space for if I wanted to do like uh, animation. If I was thinking about doing animated reels, not a great uh, viewport for that. My buttons on the downside, on the top here, my buttons are bad, right? Because they're kind of on a slope. Right, so making any kind of easy fix here is bad, but these are good because this allows me to kind of put in my buttons, my own custom buttons for these areas here for my bets. I don't have enough space though. I'm probably going to have to do something in here, which means this whole area here, welcome to fabulous Las Vegas in Nevada, is going to, I'm going to have to kill this whole section. Chances are, if I was going to use this graphic. Okay, so that's not a bad one to, to, to use as well. I'll do a couple more and then we'll get into it. I'm showing you. I'm trying to. I'm showing you how to pick your your assets a little bit, right? Because you're you're kind of uh, borrowing things from the web here, and you know what we want to try and do is here's one that that kind of mirrors what I was doing. And the reason why I picked this one is for a couple of reasons. Something like this. Um, one of them is that I don't have a lot of stuff in here. Now mine is blue stars. This is red stars. It doesn't really matter. This is a graphic. All right. It's not an actual slot machine. So this is an advantage for me because it looks like. A video, uh, a video slot machine that's out there right now. Um, I have credits, my bet, and my winner paid already there for me. So half my work is done for me, right? Half my stuff is done. And it's called super slots with a red instead of a green or a blue. I could use this one, no problem. And you know what? Let's pick this one. So again, if I was going to do a search, not because I recommend you just do what I did, but I'm saying if I was going to do it, let me just go back to. Uh, if I was going to just do slot machine again to show you where it is, right? If I go to images, right, the one I want is this one. All I did was go to Google Images. This is the one, and it's at meta.dk. So if I click on this thing and I go view image, this is what I'm getting, right? So if you're going to use that one, now you can pick whatever one you want. If this doesn't suit your needs, I'm just telling you what I would do if I was going to create a slot machine from scratch. This is what I would do. There's some issues with this, this graphic, by the way. If you notice my lights up here, there's a big, uh, it almost looks like there's a bit of a black background here or a gray background. I'm going to have to remove that, but I'm going to have to do some manipulation anyway, so that might not be so bad. Okay, let me just grab this thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy this image right now, right? And I'm going to go into my favorite manipulation program. I'm going to use fireworks. You can use whatever you want, GIMP, um, paint, whatever. Here's my fireworks. Again, if you want access to, to different, uh, some of these Adobe tools uh, here at the campus, you can always go to one of the Mac labs. Yeah. Photoshop works great. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, so if I go File, uh, New, it's going to take the size of my graphic automatically. I'm going to keep it a transparent background and press OK. And then I'm going to press uh, Command 
V and it's pasted in. So there's my image. By the way, when I do this, we're going to create a new uh, CreateJS framework. I'm going to actually do it. So we're, we're going to share this with you online on GitHub when I get to the point. We're going to kind of start building it out here today. But all of the work I'm going to do today, I'm going to share with you on GitHub so you can follow along, worst case scenario. Uh, we can set up some basic stuff. And you can replace my graphics with your own, which is what I'm hoping you're going to do. Okay. So I, get, I, need, to, I need to fix this up, right? Because to me, um, you know, I can't just use the, the, the machine as I'd like because I don't have my, uh, I have the spin button. This might work. I might keep this, right? But bet max, bet one, uh, pay table, and so on. I mean, this, these buttons here are okay. I can't use them the way they are right now. Why can't I use them the way they are? I'm making a game, right? Well, because they're static, right? I need to have a separate button for each of these things. I need to separate these out or, or cut them out somehow. So I could use what I have here, right? Some of the, some of the piece parts of this thing, but I can't use it all. So let's start by removing some pieces. I'm going to zoom in here, right? And I'm going to start uh, just killing some of these pieces here. So here I'm going to zoom into this piece, right? And I'm going to cut some of this stuff out. So I'm going to kind of use my selection tool here and as carefully as I can within reason, right? I'm, I mean, I'm doing this live with you guys. Right, so there's some issues. I'm already noticing some issues. Let me just zoom in here even more. And by the way, it's, it's good to have a, a graphic manip manipulation program that you can zoom in to give you a little bit of resolution because what you want to try and do here is um, you want to be able to go into the program. Here I go. And try and cut out the pieces that I don't want. Now, this I could cut this out or I could replace this with a black block, right? Some kind of piece where I'm going to put my stuff. I think what I want to do is I want to have this red look to my letters, the standard look, and I want to replace this with a black block. So I think what I'd rather do is take a some kind of uh, of image, like a some kind of bounding box here, and put in a uh, kind of a rectangle. Right now, the rectangle obviously is not what I want because it has um, a border of eight. I'm going to go to a border of zero, and my background is empty right now. Right? And I'm going to kind of select the background that's black. Right? So I'm going to replace the stuff that's in there right now with black. So that kind of cuts it out. That's easier than me going in and filling it out. Sometimes you just put a, like a black rectangle on top of that. All right? Just from an ease of use perspective. I'm going to zoom out. So that's the first piece I've done. Okay, and I'm going to zoom back into the three. Right? I'm going to kill that thing too, that piece. I'm going to kind of zoom in a little, little bit more, a little bit more. Because the more uh, the more I zoom in, um, as an example, then the better I can I can actually manipulate my my graphics. And again, you can use Paint for this, uh, or some other program. But at the end of the day, they're all the same in terms of Photoshop, but also do well. I'm just going to replace this piece. Okay, I'm going to kind of skip over to this piece, and again, I'm just going to create another uh, put another square in here or a rectangle to replace this piece. Okay, so now. I've got those pieces up. I don't like this, right? This 25 cents, because I'm not betting 25 cents. So this has got to go, right? Now, I have an issue. This background right here ain't black. It ain't. If you, look, if you look closely at it, right, it's got some pixelation here, right? So in order for me to, to take all this away without killing the way this all looks, I need to get a sample of this background, and I need to use it as a stamp to stamp over what I'm doing as opposed to uh, like an actual part of the background. So I'm going to take a piece of the background, a sample, and I'm going to kind of cut, o cut, uh, cut over it in layers. Again, we're talking about image manipulation, right? So I can take this piece here looks pretty dark. But what I want to do is take the same uh, pieces from the same level. And there might be some samples on this side, right? Mm, not really. Let's take a look on this side for a second. The samples on this side look a little cleaner, so I'm probably going to take some of these samples out here, just so it doesn't look like I'm. It's really ugly, right? I'll show you what I mean when I go higher. If I was to cut it out in a different way, it's bad. So here, I want to just kind of highlight a sample, the size of my graphic, right? Let's say this this length of my graphic, and I'm going to copy this sample, and I'm going to paste, right? Now, when I do such a thing, when I copy and paste. I have a sample now that I can move on, right? 
on this thing, on all, all, all together, right? So here it is, right? So now what I'm going to do, of course, instead of leave it like this, is I'm going to paste again, right? And then I'm going to kind of put it along the other one to kind of cover it over. All I'm doing is pasting my graphic by getting the same sample of dots and background to try and minimize the pixelized look, all right, as much as possible. Now, this isn't masterful work here. I'm just doing a quick hack job. But the idea here is the same. Now, you could simply just replace the entire background by recoloring it. That's another way to do it. But for me, I want to keep as, as good as possible. Now, let's see how this looks. This may not look good enough, right, when I zoom back out. Or it may just be fine. Can you tell? Probably not, right? And this is why I would use that system. But if I, as I come in closer, if I was ever going to pixelize and look closer, I don't want this to be a glaring difference. Now, if you notice, there's different images here, right? Okay, this is the next piece I got to take care of. I want to kill this piece, my reels, with something that kind of blends with this color. It's not white necessarily. It's this color right here. So how do I do that? So I'm going to take this. Yeah, I can use my color picker for sure. And let's just get rid of this for a second. All right, so here I am. And what I'm going to do is with this, this I can actually go here. And this is my color picker. Now, color picker exists in many programs. I'm just using, again, I'm using fireworks. So here I'm just going to choose fireworks. And there's, there's my new color. Now, because I know this is the color that I want, if I wanted to go white, it would be easier for me to do, right? Because if I did white, then my, my, all my graphics that I'm going to have would also be white. It would be good. Could I go white with this? Yes, I could. So I could use the color picker and choose the same colors that it has here. But I think the easier thing to do is just to go pure white. So I'm just going to choose white. right? And I'm going to just do the same trick I did down here by replacing the, the reels with a white square right now. I don't need it because I'll do that. You know what? I can't think of that. Yeah, I will lose the effect. But I'm not an artist. And you know what? I want to pass my course. right? And I don't, have, I don't have time to fill in. I could. It's not that difficult to do. But I don't have time. I'm not going to go over that much detail with you because this isn't a graphic course. This is a web course. Right? Oh, my God. This is awesome. <laughs> you just found a completely blind. <laughs> Perfect. OK, so here's my white square or my white rectangle, I mean. All right, this is what my right, white rectangle is going to look like, right? And I'm going to do the same things for this one here, right? And this one here, take a look. So now I'm just replacing some of these, these images with, with my own. All I'm doing is drawing rectangles. That's all I'm doing here. OK, let's zoom back out. That's what I have right now, OK? Getting better, right? Getting better all the time. So I have credits, bet, and winner paid. This is good, but I do need some kind of, of jackpot area I don't have yet. I'm going to have to add that in later, right, somehow. OK, cool, cool. Uh, what about the top piece over here, this piece? This piece is messed up. Look, I've got this gray background over here, and it goes all the way down the sides. I could do two things here. From simplicity, I could ignore it, right, and say, and guys, you know what? If you ignored it, if you didn't go in here and chop it up, I'd be probably OK with it. But if I wanted to kill it, I have the magic wand, which is available to most tools out there these days. And if I click on this area, first of all, let me just go select. Uh, OK, it's not selected. That's good. If I click on this magic wand, if you notice, it actually eats up part of this, um, this area, which I don't want. But I can reduce my tolerance. And every tool is a little differently. But this allows me, this has a, tool, uh, a, um, a control called tolerance that I can actually reduce the amount of how tolerant it is of the colors to kind of eat up less and less of my area. But then if it's too complex, like this, sometimes the magic wand is not the best choice. Let's go down to like five. And as you see, it's not good. So the other way I could do it is I could chop it up by using um, either the lasso tool, right, or the polygon lasso tool, which I can actually draw my, my area and then chop it up that way. Again, from a time perspective, we ain't got time for this nitty gritty stuff. So I'm going to leave it as is, right? Which I recommend you do as well, right? Only because we just don't have time. OK, so very basic. I'm going to have a problem with this, though. This credits, this bet, and winner paid. I have a problem already. Why? Because for a couple reasons. One, um, <laughs> winner paid, 
as an example, bet and credits are in somebody else's font. I have no control of what's been written here. I may want to replace these, this font with my own, right? So I have more control over what's going to be written. So let's get rid of that right now. So I kind of go in there. And again, it looks like it's a pixelated area uh, down here. Again, I could do the same kind of trick that I did before and color over it with um, samples of this area down here. And the, it's actually easier because there's a bigger sample, a bigger square that I could use. So let's do that. Let's take a, um, you know, kind of a sample. I'm going to cut this area down here, right? Because it's about the size of my, my, uh, uh, my area that I want. I'm going to copy it. Right? And I'm going to paste it. And of course, I'm going to move this over. Right? And of course, it didn't work. Right? So copy it, paste it. That's better. And it's not working. Let's go back up. It's not working because of where I'm. I'm I may have to, with some of these times when we do this stuff, uh, I may have to use um, like a cut and paste, but usually a copy and paste works. Yes, that works fine paste. And now I have an image that I can copy and paste. Take a look. It almost covers up my whole credits right there, right? So from an ease of use, I'm going to paste it again, right? And if you notice, I didn't really get what I wanted. Not getting what I want now, of course, because let's select it. Oh, there it is. There is one there. Okay, so let's put this so that it covers this text up. I know I'm being meticulous, and you're going to say, Tom, it's too much. I don't, I'm not an artist. You don't have to be. Really, you don't. All I'm doing is covering over my words with, with blocks right now, right? Truly, that's all I'm doing, right? And I'm doing it because, just like this, because I want to retain the same shading and the same, um, you know, uh, pixelation down here, so it doesn't seem weird when I go and do my graphic. Okay, let's go back out. Okay, one thing I want to do at this stage is I want to flatten my selection. So I'm going to select all, and what this does is it shows me all of my layers. Take a look. These are all the little things I did, right? So I've got some squares there. I got all the stuff. Well, I don't want any of these to be separate. I want this to be the same. And in a lot of programs, you can do something called flatten selection which makes it all one big graphic. There's no layers anymore, right? So I'm going to right click, right? And I'm going to go to flatten selection. And now it's all one big graphic. So I don't have to worry anymore. Now this is good because you know what? Um, this graphic right here for my, uh, how much money I have, this graphic right here for how much I bet, and this graphic right here for what, how much I got paid are different sizes. I don't like that. I want to make it so that they're all the same size, which means I'm going to take this graphic right here, make a copy of it, and paste it on top of this graphic right here. All right? Just to make it look like our own. So I'm going to go zoom in here again. Again, a little bit of graphic manipulation. And I'm going to, uh, again, highlight this area here. And you guys think I'm nuts, I know but you'll see what I'm talking about in a second, right? I'm going to copy this thing, and I'm going to go over here, right? And I'm going to paste this thing. Right now I've got this big, yeah, no, no. Right, so it's going to go right on top of here, see? So it looks a little bit more balanced, a little bit more balanced than it did before. I'm still not quite happy. It should be over here, right? But that's easily correctable because I can just kill this piece right underneath it and make this piece a little bigger, right? I, I'm saying these are the things, these are the options I have. I'll leave this thing like the way it is right now. Okay, let me fix this piece here, okay? So the middle piece is not balanced, so I want to add in that same piece, right? Here's my next piece, take a look, right? And this time I'm going to manipulate the size of the piece by using a scalar right? Let's take a look here. And I got an issue. I can't scale it that way. I'm going to have to cut it if I want to manipulate the size of it, right, to make it even. Because otherwise it'll scale everything, including the edges, which doesn't look accurate. 
So you know what? Let's leave it alone, but let's kill this piece in here. And let's move this piece so that I can extend it by moving it out. Again, all I'm doing is copying and pasting at this point. I also want to put some kind of, um, you know, graphic up here somewhere, right, that shows me my jackpot, right? On my other one, I had space between these, this, this area here. So I could add a space to my, gra to my slot machine, like in here, uh, in the middle here, and kind of push this graphic up a bit. I could, but it, would kind of, it might look a little weird. Let's try it anyway, right? So first I'm going to modify my canvas, my canvas size. And right now it's 406 by 407. This is my size of my canvas, which is a good size. I want to increase from the middle, right, or from the, from the bottom now. I'm going to choose my anchor. So here's my anchor for my canvas. And I'm going to increase my canvas by about 100 pixels, right? So I'm going to move it out 100. So I'm going to go from 407 to 507. Let's do it to 500, so approximately uh, this size. Okay, so here's my canvas. I've made it bigger. Take a look. I give myself a little bit of room, right? And now I want to cut this whole top off and move it up a little bit to give myself space, right, to put my other, my other image here up here, right? Let's do that. So I'm going to select it. Again, I'm going I'm to zoom in to do this because I, I need to have more accuracy. Right. How are you guys doing with yours? Because this is important to try and do together so we're on the same page. Worst case scenario, if you were going to use my image as a background and you said, hey, Tom, I'm really not good at this stuff. Can I use yours? I would say probably not. But, uh, you know, not to say that I would, I would have to think about it if you, had, if you didn't try. So there, I've cut it out. Take a look. I've cut that top piece out. Right? And now I'm going to paste it back in. But now when I paste it back in, it's an object that I can move around. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of space to put my, my other graphic in there. Okay? I'll use my nudging tools to pull this out. I got this over here. Right? I'm going to move over back here and paste it in there. So now I've got an idea of where I'm going to put it. And I need to put some kind of stuff on either side here to fill in the gaps. Right? So uh, let, me, let me space out see how it looks. It's going to look something like that at the end, right? So I could put in some kind of silver piece that matches. This is where I'd probably use some kind of color matching thing uh, to put this, the, this back together again. Put Humpty back together again, if you will, right? Okay, so what am I going to do? Well, I want to kind of copy the sides here. So I'm going to kind of go in here, right, in the first place. And I want to kind of copy the styles. Well, I have an edge here and an edge here. So I want to use these to kind of create my edges first. So let's do a copy of this part here. So I'll kind of take this piece and I cover, I'm going to cover this much over here like this, right? These edges. And if you notice, I have uh, an edge here that's kind of up to here and my other edge over here goes to here. So I want to kind of make it so that when I copy my edges, I have the same kind of, um, the same scale of what I'm using, at least this piece. I want, to cover, I want to cover these pieces. This almost looks identical, actually. So let's cover this piece here. So I'll copy it. I'll paste it. I'll remove that. <laughs> that's not what I wanted to do. I copied it. I pasted it. No, that's not, what, that's not the one I want. Right? Let's try this again. I want to copy this piece, this piece here, this little piece. I want to copy this piece. All right, and I want to paste that back. Do it, baby. That's it. So if you notice, just this little piece here, but I can get my edge this way. And now I don't care so much about perfection. I care about joining these two things together. Oh, right? Okay. So then all of a sudden, boom, boom, I can do that. I've just basically sized or scaled that size so it makes it look together. Right? So that's one piece of it, one part of my puzzle. I got to the other side. Same idea, I've got a bit of this piece here that I'm going to kind of grab, right? Again, all I'm doing is, uh, I don't want to grab that piece. I want to grab the edge and kind of this piece right here to kind of connect it so it has the same color uh, background. And then I'll, I'll extend it from there. So again, I'm going to kind of copy it, right? Go in and paste it. And now what I can do, once I've got it pasted, I can kind of put it down here. Right, that's how it's going to look, and I can extend it. I can actually uh, make it bigger, kind of just to fit in this area right here. Right, so this is cool. I'm getting that, that look and feel that I want for my background, so now that it looks like it's one kind of background, right? And now what I want to do is I want to go in here, 
right? I've got a bit of a bump here compared to this. Maybe, maybe what I want to do just to make it simple is this piece here. I'm going to extend. I'm going to extend out. So I'm going to kind of I can extend this up back to here, which is okay, and extend this out. Let's see how. Hopefully, it won't, it won't matter too much. It does. It does. It does. It does. So it can't really do it because it'll expand the border too much. But I can take another piece, another sample. So I can take this sample up here, and I go in this. This might look meticulous, but guys, if you want your graphic to look good, you don't have a lot of options in terms of how it's going to look. It doesn't matter. Even if I grab it a little extra, it doesn't matter. I'm going to, I'm going to clean it up in a sec. So I'm going to copy this again. It does, of course, but I'm, I'm using it because I want more control. Paste. I'm going to pull it down. And then I'm going to use my my extend um, um, my you know kind of uh, graphic to manipulate it so it goes down. Okay, this is cool. And you know what? There's not much of a line. You probably won't be able to tell. There's a bit of a of a, of a defect here yeah. between these two, but you probably won't be able to tell. And now I've kind of sized it so it's the same size all around, yes, right? Um, if I drop it down just one little niche lower, like so, right? If I do that, I'll lose this piece. Right, I have this little extra piece in here that I don't want. That's why I want it to be here. But if I do that, that means I sacrifice this border all the way across. Am I willing to do that? Yeah. <laughs> it's only one little pixel, right? No one will tell. So I'm going to kind of do one of these, right? Kind of going to extend this thing all the way in here until it gets to right in my corner and right up is going to butt right against my graphic. So it's going to look as good as it can. Okay, cool, cool. I've gotten that did that piece, and this piece might be even easier to do, right? Because I don't have a border. I just have this piece right here, so I'm going to extend this piece too, and I'm going to go right across with this one, because it's the same pixel area that it's going to come across. Now it may not look perfect, but it's going to look way better than it would have if I just tried to color it by hand. Coloring it by hand, the problem with that is you don't match mix and match the colors as much. Let me take a look and see how that looks. Now is that okay? So it's kind of a weird looking slot machine. Yeah. But at I least think, it's okay. Which one? This thing? Yeah. It is in the center. Look. I've got guides that tell me it's in the, right in the middle. Right? Yeah. It's just because of the, the way the, the, the stylized graphics are. Right? So this is where it's going to be up here. I've got this one I got to fix down here. Right? Um, I've got to add some kind of line that connects these two together. Right? To make it kind of like one big slot machine look. I could do it uh, very simply by taking a sample, right? <coughs> like for example, between this line and this line, I could make a, another another line altogether that kind of matches up with this line up here. Again, I'm rushing to do this kind of stuff. You simply could make it so that it's a lot easier. And what I can do for this is, you know, I, I can use a block like this. That's fine, and and kind of angle it. That's one way to do it. Or I could use a line. This is where the line might be working a little better. I'm going to kind of go in the middle of this thing, roughly, and kind of put a line that connects the middle of this thing. Right? There's my line. And now what I'm going to do is make this thicker. So I'm going to kind of go into like four or five. Let's say, let's go to five. All right? And it's five all around, right? But that's okay. We're going to fix it up because it's quite heavy. Let's go four. Right? Maybe that's too much, but it's okay. You're going to see it's going to blend in a second. Now I'm going to take a, uh, maybe five would be better, but I'm going to blend it. And it says pixel soft. I'm going to change the type of, of uh, brush that I'm going to use. I'm going to use a hard line, right? So it's going to be more of a square, which you can choose. And I can use a hard line that's um, hard line that's rounded, so it's a little bit softer. No, I like the other one better, right? So I'm going to go back to the hard line that's not rounded. You can also go for a soft line. Mm, that's okay. It just won't be as, as square as this one will, right? That's the only thing that it won't do, right? So it won't be a square. But the reason why I want to use this as opposed to a, and there's many different kinds of pen tips I can use, right? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, again, I could use different things. If I use a pencil, like a pencil hard, right? Then it becomes one. This is one pixel. I go with five pixels. Right? It still doesn't really do anything when I go that, that level. Right? Again, I'm trying to look to, to see something that makes sense. That might be better. But, 
at. Maybe go over, maybe go to seven pixels, and I get a bit of a of a rounding. Okay, that's not bad because it still looks a little bit straighter than the other one. Okay, now what I can do, of course, is I can go to the edges, and I can manipulate how the uh, the thing looks, right? So this is what I want. I want this color pencil. I'm going to do that line again, right? Because I've got this uh, selection of colored colored pencil. There's different pencils you can use to do the same thing. Right on your on your program, graph. There's also graphite and maybe pixel hard or pixel soft would, might might work fine as well. Let's go to five pixels one more time. Yeah, and now I want to change the background color. So instead of it being black, I want to take a sample, probably of some kind of grayish color like this, right, to kind of connect it. Okay, that, that looks a little better. Or if I don't like that, if I want to make it something like this, I could take a swatch of sample. I could take if this doesn't look good for me, instead of drawing my own line, like, like I just did, I could take an approximate line, which, if I was going to measure it, is approximately 100, uh, 141 um, uh, pixels long, maybe 150, and connect it from one to the other. All right, because it's at an angle, right? So let's try that. So I'm going to do that instead. So now I know my size of my line. I know it's going to be about five pixels long, right? and now I can take a sample from over here which I'm going to do. So here it is. Because I want this to kind of be in line. Uh, let's, let's, let's zoom in here. It's making this graphic is important. Once I've gotten this graphic, I can do everything else. It'll come a little bit faster for me. It doesn't like me selecting what I'm selecting. There we go. So this is about this. Okay. This is good. So I'm going to kind of copy this thing and I'm going to go down here. And if I have to extend it, I can extend it. It's okay. I'm going to paste. Right? Here's the size that I want, which is equivalent to what I'm using. I'm going to extend this line a little bit because now it doesn't matter. It's my connector, so it's not going to look like anything else I have, right? And what I can do, I'm going to kind of connect it up to here for a second. I can rotate it or I can keep it straight. Let's see what the keeping it straight piece looks like. Maybe that piece will look okay like that. Let me see. I think I might just do it like that instead of rotate it, instead of angle it. And so I'll do the same thing on this side. That might be the best way to do it. So again, the sizing would be approximately like this big. Slightly different. I mean, I could probably grab that one if you if you're saying if you're saying just if you're just telling me to grab this whole thing, I could probably do that, and you wouldn't be able to tell. So here, I copy it, and I go onto this side over here, click away, and paste it, right? And here I am, just pasting it at the same level. Sure. Now, uh, because um, it darkens here on this side, and it's a little You're right. Um, uh, but that's basically what I, I would recommend, something like this. So that's that's the uh, the size that we do. Probably that would probably do. Yeah, it doesn't look perfect, but for what we want, this is enough. Okay, it gives you a little bit of areas. Like for example, maybe I'm going to choose to put my buttons in here too for uh, for my other things. So I've got my my buttons. Now I got to grab these buttons. Let's let's select all again. Oh, I got this area here to fix too. Hold on, got this one little last piece to do. Okay, uh, here I need a little bit more care. And the one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this area here. So I'm going to kind of go select. Here is I'm going to select this piece. Take a look. I'm going to copy and then paste right on top. So that kind of takes away my issue, right? And now this is where I'm going to get funky, where I recommend, you know. Um, this is probably the thing to do. I want to extend this box. I want to move it over here. So I'm going to take a sample of this box, and instead of ex I can't extend it because it'll be too narrow if I do such a thing or too fat, right? 
So I can't do it that way. I'm going to have to do it another way. So I'm going to have to take approximately how much I want to extend it to, right? Like maybe I want to extend it about this much, almost half the box, right? Actually, let's take a little. Let's take half the box, half of, as a sample. Hold on a second. Here's about half the box or more, right? And I'll explain myself in a second. Okay, there it is. I've copied, so I've just kind of, kind of done a copy again, just so people can see what I'm doing. Because you can't see my keys on on the web. And I'm going to paste, right? And now I'm going to move this thing over. Take a look. Ah. So I can. I'm at the edge of my of my copy. So I'm kind of make it as even between these two places as it was before. So now it's evenly spaced and a little bit bigger without me extending it too much. Let me take a look and see how that looks. Maybe a little bit more. All right, so I'm gonna move it just a touch more. What do you think? Almost perfect. Okay, I'm gonna kind of zoom out here, and this is my beginning graphic. Now I've got some other areas up here I'm gonna, I'm gonna fill in. So I'm gonna kind of control A for selecting all, right? And I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna to go to flatten selection. And flatten selection, what it means is it takes away all the layers, and you can do the same thing with your graphic. So everything is layer one now? Everything is one layer, right? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Canvas. I'm going to, go, I'm going to trim my canvas down to take away that extra, extra canvas space. I just made room for myself so that way uh, when I use my canvas, um, let's see just one second here. Uh, I'm going to go into my canvas here, and I want to cut up my buttons because my buttons I want to make them so I can control them, right? The way they are right now, I can't do anything with my buttons, right? So if I want to use these same buttons in here, if I want to do some of these same things, if I was going to be reducing my things, I've got my reset. This is good. I'll keep my reset where it is, right? So I need a reset button. So I need to cut this out. So let's save this thing first. Let's create my assets. So I'm going to sit file save as. I've done a lot of work and I haven't saved anything yet. That's a bad thing. I'm going to go into my downloads. I'm going to create a new folder in my downloads called slot machine. All right, here's my, my folder. And inside my slot machine, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this images, right? Because this is where my folder is going to go for my assets. All right, so here's my image assets. And inside my image, I'm going to call slot machine. That's what it's going to be called. The whole thing is going to be called slot machine. Or I can call it background, which is also fine. Let's do background so we know what, it, what we're talking about. Are you guys with me? I know it's hard to follow along, um, but the, if you don't have the tools that I have, but the idea here is that um, what you want to try and do is, is do what I'm doing approximately. Okay, so I need to cut these buttons out next. Now, do I have to cut them out, or can I just copy them? Well, I probably can copy them, because I just kind of put, as long as I preserve the locations of where they are, right, which is what we're going to do, so I can put them back later on, all right? So let's kind of uh, copy these buttons out here. So first, I'm going to get my spin button, and I want to, uh, that's too, that's, that's not accurate. I want to kind of go, I want to go right in there into my spin button, and, and maybe kind of select much more accurately of where I'm going to get. And if I'm not good, right? If I'm not good, then what I want to do is I want to kind of, oh, that's not what I wanted. Uh, I want to kind of make sure that when I'm in here, I select the exact area in here. And it's kind of hard to see because my selection tool is also black. And I could change the, the, the actual color or I can even zoom in closer, like let's say you zoom into right here, right? And here I'm going to just use my selection tool to get as accurate a selection as possible. And I'm using my guides here to help me. No. No. That's about right. Okay, good. Okay, so I'm just selecting my button. If I zoom out now, I've got my button. So I've just selected around my button. That's all I've done here, right? Uh, what I want to do is I want to copy it, copy my button, my spin button, right? This is cool, but I want to paste it. Um, I want to paste the spin button in another file. So I'm going to go File, New, 
Here it is, 46 by 46 is the size of my button. And here's my first asset, spin. All right, so I've kind of got my, I haven't cut it out, I copied it. And the reason why I've done this is because I want to preserve this button, the spin button, the way it is. So file, save as, and we're going to call this spin button, right? I'm probably, and save it in there. That's the first thing I'm going to do. The next piece I'm going to go into is these buttons here, bet max and bet one. Uh, this is cool, bet one, you know, and if I wanted to make my graphic, nothing says that in your machine, as an example, in your gra in your uh, your slot machine, that you should have buttons like mine, where I had like 10, 20, 50, blah, blah, whatever. I'm not going to do that in this example. You could, but what I'm going to do is instead of bet max and bet one, I'm going to take these graphics, right, as I have them, and uh, remove them. Pay table, definitely don't care about this button, right? So maybe this is where I'm going to put my, my power off button, right? Here's my reset button. I do care about this button, and I want to maintain this the way it is. So I'm going to copy this one as well. So I'm going to go in here and copy it. Again, I'm going to have to kind of do this a couple of times so that way I get the button the, in the right uh, size. I could take more than I want, but I want to be as accurate as I, as I can be because when I start uh, angling in here, I don't want to be outside of my bounds, right? Uh, from my button, there it is. Okay, so this is this button. Again, I'm going to copy this thing, and I'm going to go to a new document, and this is 40 by 40, and I'm going to paste. There's my reset button. I'm going to go File, Save As. I know it's like watching paint peel here, but this you got to do this kind of work. Reset button. We're not going to do all of them, okay? Because I don't have time for everything right now with you guys. I want to spend kind of an hour doing this, and then we're going to go back to programming, right? Because we got to do that piece too to help you out. All right, so there's this is my reset button. I've got my reset button. I've got my spin button in my background, and I've got a button that I don't want, right? So I'm going to get rid of this one, and I'm probably get, going to rid, get rid of these two, right? But I need a sample of my red button because I want my red buttons to be the ones that I spin with, all right? A sample of my red button. So I'm going to take this big sample right from here, right from the corner. Sorry, right from where I perceive the corner to be. Here it is. This big square is what I'm going to take right now for this big red button. Okay. I'm going to kind of copy it and put it into a new file. It's 48 by 48. And except for bet max, it's not going to say bet max anymore. I'm going to have to kind of work with this one a little bit closer. Right, so that way I get rid of bet max and maybe make it say something else. Now, there's some strategies on how I can do that, but for now, let's say I was going to accept it the way it is bet, bet max and bet one. All right, if that was my strategy, I would save it as. If I wanted to change it, what would I do? I'm going to get samples just like I did before with the big slot machine and paste it across here to get rid of to keep the same pixelation over here. Right? I would keep the same stuff, put it in there, and then take my own font and put it on top. That's what I would do to make this button. So from a graphic manipulation, there's very simple tools you can use. I'm not using anything special. I'm not doing pixel by pixel manipulation. We have no time for that. But if you notice, I've spent an hour so far, almost, putting together some, some of my graphics. Right? So let's leave this bet max the way it is, right? Because we're going to, I mean, I could certainly change this, this button, but I'm going to leave it so that way We just, don't, we just don't have time. Here's bet max. I'm going to uh, kind of cut this one out and go to my new new thing. I've kind of changed my mind here. This is also 40 by 40. And I kind of save this as, because we don't have, I just don't have time. I looked at the clock and I'm like, hmm, I could show you guys how to do this, but bet max button. I just don't have time to do it. I'll just leave it as is for now. Bet max. Okay, and I'll get rid of this. Don't save. Oh, I know I need to save that. Cancel. Uh, I don't need this. I don't need this. I don't need to, no, don't need this. But I do need my bet one. I do need, I don't I do need my bet one button, and I'm going to get rid of pay table altogether. I'm just going to get rid of it because that doesn't make any sense. So here's I'm going to just take this last one.
See, it's just from a, from a selection perspective, sometimes because the way this button is and my selection tool is also black, that's why I'm having difficulty. Uh, but here I'm just going to go copy and again create a new, new file, 40 by 40, looks to be my button size, and kind of put in bet one. So file, save as, you know, bet, bet one, button. And maybe I'll make my bet max saying, maybe you can, the maximum you can bet is 100, <laughs> you know, whatever, right? Because you won't be able to bet 500. So one, you can go up one at a time, or you can go five, you know, 100 at a time. Okay, there we go, right? So bet, my bet one button's good. This one's I'm going to kill. How can I kill this one? Well, I do the same thing I did last one. I leave these two buttons in place, and this one I'm just going to delete. And how I'm going to do that, I'm going to do the same kind of deletion and update my background as I did before. How I'm going to do that? I'm going to take a sample from the background like this, right? Here's my sample background, right? And I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it, right? So I can move this piece so that it doesn't seem to be, I can't extend it like I did last time because it'll look too odd. Guys, I apologize for, the, for how long this is taking, but this is, I wanted to show you because if I don't demonstrate this, this piece to, to make you understand that you need to start your project now, right? Then what's going to happen is as we get closer to doing stuff together, you're, you're going to be like, well, I can't do it. I have no time. Well, you know, I know you don't have any time because this stuff takes effort. This stuff takes, um, you know, and even if you don't have a lot of knowledge, sometimes it's picking up an extra skill that you didn't have before. Like, for example, uh, you know, manipulating some some graphics, as an example, right, um, is what you need to do sometimes to be able to. So not, so there's a there. So it's kind of balanced too. So spin, bet max, and in the middle we've got um, these other buttons here. Bet one and reset. Okay, cool. And I've got a, these slots here for where I'm going to target everything. Very interesting. Okay, now I need to put an Excel spreadsheet together or some kind of. I need to mark all this stuff down first. I'm going to say I'm going to select all. See, so I have all these other extra marks. I'm going to right click and go flatten selection, and then I'm going to do. I'm going to save. I'm going to save my background image. Okay, now let's let's start recording everything. Okay, because I need to record my my coordinates. Right. First of all, how big is my slot machine? My slot machine is 406 by 439. Right. So that's going to be my background graphic. So the good thing to do is, again, you can use Excel or some other kind of spreadsheet kind of program. I got Excel from Microsoft, so it makes sense for me to use something like that. I'm going to kind of pull together another Excel sheet. And in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of put in uh, my, background, uh, my, my background graphic, right? And my background uh, is the name of my graphic. That's kind of cool. But what I probably need to do here is not just call, kind of name my graphic, right? This is my graphic for my background. But which is my start X and start Y position? I need to know those things because I want to kind of map that when I, when I kind of go back to my, my program, right? Start X and start Y. Well, it's going to start at 0, 0, right? Because my graphic is going to start at the top left corner of the screen is when it's, is when it's, it's going to kick off. So that's where this is. And you know what? My, the other thing I need to know about it is how big it is. Well, if I click on this thing, it says 406 by 439, width and height. Width and height. So width and height, right? So width is 406, I believe, and my height is 439 pixels. I know that's how big it is, so I need, I need to make my canvas to be accurate about 500 by 500. That's probably what I would make my canvas look like. You can make your canvas whatever it is. Now here's a problem. If I make my canvas 500 by 500, it's not a standard size. It's not 640 by 480. It's not 320 by 480. It's not 64, uh, you know, uh, 1024 by 768. It's some weird number. When I do something like that, I'm I'm consciously making the decision that I might have a little bit of degradation of, of, of performance because of that. Just letting you know. So if you make some odd pixel of some odd canvas size, you may get some uh, performance degradation here. But that's fine. I'm going to make that decision later on. Okay. So that's my background. Now I got to measure the other pieces. I know that my spin button is a little bit bigger than everything else, and I can pull that up. I can kind of go file, 
you know, uh, open recent, and then I can look at my spin button. Here's my spin button. I'm going to zoom in here. And if you notice, it's my size is 46 by 46. So I'm going to go back to my Excel sheet. So here's my spin button. I know that I have this, 46 by 46. That's how big my, my image is. Right? I'm just going to kind of center this in a second. I'll make it look nice. We need to do this. So when I map it physically, now I'm going to go back. I'm mapping it onto the, on the, onto the programming side after this, right? I also know, I need to know where this bloody thing starts. Where's my spin button starting? Guys, do you know offhand? I don't. So how would I do that? Well, I'm going to take this image, the spin button. I'm going to copy and paste it back onto my image, right? In fact, if anything, I'm going to kind of zoom in to this area here, right? And I'm going to paste it in here. Okay, well, here's my spin button. And I want to position it right on top of where it, it currently sits. So if I want it to, to position right on top, exactly, it's going to be at position 324 over 376. Uh, can you get away from that? Because I think you're, you're going to be Are you happy now? Uh, just for the measurements. Are you happy? Yeah. OK. So it's now it's the, uh, the image is 323 by 376. Yeah, by 376. I like your accuracy. I hope you're going to be like that with yours. <laughs> 323 by 376. By what would I say? 376? Yeah. So what am I doing here? Why am I writing these stuff down? Anyone have an idea of why am I writing my coordinate system down? I'm going to put them back exactly there. When I cost, when I, it's a graphic. It's just a bitmap. All I'm going to do when I set my stuff back is put it back in there. Now, if I have my buttons, I can manipulate them, right? Once I put it back in my graphic, but I need to know where everything is sitting or else I can't do this kind of thing, right? Okay, so that's my spin button. I know this is, I'm almost done. Um, I know I need to put my, my spin button back. Um, that's one thing. I want to also load up my other buttons. So I'm going to open up my recent files. I got my bet one maximum. Uh, I got my bet one and maximum buttons. Hold on a second. And I also have my, um, uh, my, I got my reset button too. So those are the buttons I need. So here's my reset button. I'm going to copy that in. That's the next one I'm going to put into my background. I'm going to, help me out, uh, Brown, Brown Shirk. Tell me where it's, when, it's, when, it's, when I'm good to go. When are you happy? How's that? Are you happy with that one? One thing is it's 40 by 40. That's one thing I need to know. 40 by 40 for my width and my height. So 40 by 40. And this is a reset button, right? By the way, you could use some of this stuff in your external document. Eh? When you're creating your, your code, you can say, this is the position of all my assets, right? So you're telling the program or someone else how you built this thing, right? Um, how you came up with the numbers and, and how they balance. So 38 by, 38 by 30, 380, right? So 38 by 380. Okay, cool, cool. And now uh, my bet max and my so my bet one. So I don't need this anymore, but I do need my bet max. And go back here. Bet max. So it looks like 40 by 40, 212 by 380. On the same line, basically. 40 by 40. Two twelve x by three eighty y, and this is my bet max button. Okay, and when one, my last one is my bet one button. Here it is. I'm building my UI, and I'm putting this in place too, kind of fitting it into the same slot. There, that's where it looks right. So. Uh, 40 by 40, 155 by 380. So 155 by 380, still 40 by 40 in size. All my buttons are 40 by 40, right? I know that for sure. And this is called going to be called my bet one button. Okay, let's do a couple things. Let's make my background on this thing white. I'm going to increase my font size on my Excel to 20 so I can read it, so you guys can read it. And I'm just going to do one of these and create a little table for myself. If you know Excel, then you're good to go. A little table that tells me where my background graphics, what they look like. 
kind of thing. This is my how it's going to look so far. Okay, so my background, my spin button, my reset button, my bet one max. I got a couple things to check out as well. Well, let's leave that for now because I don't have time. Yes, you're right. Okay, but I don't have time to add them in. I do need to know where these things sit. This is very important, right? Because mm -hmm. these 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 reels are the whole life of my program, right? Yeah. If I don't know my, where my reels are, I'm in trouble, right? So let's get a real let's measure the real size, right? Now I, I can't just do it like this. I know I can kind of go in here and go, kind of select this. So I know this is about 56, 57 by 165, right? 57 by 165, and I can kind of, I know this is where it's going to probably start. So 57 by 165, it looks like when I do this, this sizing, if I was just going to draw this out, right, it's going to be approximately at, um, uh, so it's going to be 85 by 105, 85 by 105 approximately, and 57 by 165, okay? And if you notice, once I draw this line, now it's a little bit outside the, the bounds, and I th I'm not happy with that. But I don't have to actually draw it. I can just highlight it like, like I'm doing. So let's just do that again, just to make sure that it's fair, as accurate as I can get it. Because this is really important, guys. If you don't know where your reel is, then you don't know where it's going to appear on the screen. And it's going to mess up, right? So this is approximately what it is. It looks like it's almost right. Um, again, 85 by 105, uh, 57, 165. So this is, I would call this real one. We have, we don't have this yet, but this is real one. This is where my slot's going to be. Um, and again, going back, 85, 105. That's wrong, actually. It's, uh, that's width and height, 85, 105. And 57, 165. Okay, that's my real one. And real two, if I take this and put it over here, because I know it's the same size approximately of real one, I'm just cheating, right? It's 85, 105, 162, 165. 162, 165. So this is all the same. But I'm going to copy real two and real three. So here's real two, and this is real three. And just sorry to go back, it's um, uh, 162, 165. So this is uh, the the coordinates for real uh, real two, 162. And for real three, again I'm just cheating a little bit by pulling this across. Make sure they're all accurate, approximately accurate. They're not going to be. I would do this a little bit better if it was if I was really doing this for myself. Uh, and then this is 267 by 165. So those are the these are the coordinate spaces for my real one, real two, and real three. This is what's going to happen. Okay, cool. Um, I've got I've started my coordinate system, um, and then I can start mapping kind of all this out. Um, and I'm going to do other things. One more thing. Um, if I was going to kind of map out some other other uh, thing, I'm going to keep this open because I'm going to add things onto it later on. For now, this is a good place to start. And I'm going to call this. I'm just going to kind of call, go file uh, save on save as. And I'm going to call this my uh, coordinates, my uh, graphic coordinates, graphic coordinates, right? And I'm going to I'm going to put that, of course, in my downloads. And inside my uh, my new slot machine uh, folder, and kind of leave it in there, so I can save this up. So this is enough to get me started. Um, I'm going to save this movie now, and when we come back, I'm going to start doing things programmatically.